it. So instead, Shireman goes to Creighton, which caused you to realign your top 25 and one yet again. Number one, where do you have uh, the Creighton Blue Jays now? Where did you have them before and where do you have them now? Number That's question one. And the question two is this. You know, I got to bring up this Ken Palm tweet here. I love me some preseason rankings, but the lack of diversity in them is kind of astounding. In an era of increased player movement, there should be more variation in opinion, and yet here we are. Calling out the group thing, which isn't calling out any one particular person, but as the man who might even set the tone for all other preseason rankings that follow, do you feel some level of guilt over the fact that maybe your rankings might be informing others and therefore creating uh, a little bit of lack of diversity, as Pomeroy is calling it? I feel no guilt whatsoever. Okay. I am capable of feeling guilt. I have done so in my life, but never about college basketball rankings in, in the month of May. Um, I will say um, it was interesting that he, and I, I get his larger point, um, and there's no question, it, just like mock drafts, preseason rankings, yes, um, they do get to become a little bit of groupthink because I, I must, this, this is just what happens. Um, let's say there's a team that you don't have ranked. But you look up and Gary Parrish has got him eighth and Jeff Porzello has him 11th and John Rothstein has him 10th. You go, well, I got to rank that team now. I mean, all these other guys have them in the top 11. So how can I not have them ranked? And so that person will then put that team in the rankings. And that, that, that's just a real thing that happens. I'm just telling you. Same thing with mock drafts. There's not, there's not somebody I have I would have in my first round, but – Jonathan Gavoni's got him going 12th and um, Kyle Boone's got him going 15th. Well, I got to get him at least in the, you know, high twenties or else I'm just going to look like an idiot. So yeah, groupthink is a, is a real thing. I will say that with Creighton, I don't know that it is really. I mean, I've got quite, you know, John Rothstein's got Creighton too. I've got him 10. I moved him up from That's like, good. I moved, good. Yeah. I moved him up from 15 to 10, maybe 14 to 10, four or five spots um, in the most uh, recent version. Um, and like, I'm not saying two is wrong or five is wrong. Rostin's got him two. Borzello's got him five. I've got him 10. Um, but, you know, this is a team that they lost. One way to say it is to bring it back five of their top seven. The other way to say it is they're losing two of their top three scores, right? They lose Ryan Hawkins. They lose Alex O'Connell. Bring back everybody else who matters beyond those two. They just had Baylor Shireman, uh, who is uh, going to transition from being a jackrabbit to a Blue Jay. So it's a good team that advanced to the round of 32 of the NCAA tournament, that played Kansas pretty tough, um, even though they were um, depleted a bit by injuries. And they bring back five of their top seven. They add Baylor Shireman. They also finished 50 at the Ken Palm. Exactly. I think Ken Palm's tweet is like him tipping his hand because he's got his rankings right now. I I would venture to say that when we see those rankings get released at like late, late October, Creighton won't even be in the top 30. I think that's what he's kind of getting at. Yeah, and he might be right. Um, that's why I was hesitant to go, if I'm being completely transparent, before I even looked at what I was going to do with Creighton, Rostin had already had them up to number two. And I was like, I don't know if I, I can't go that high with it. I just, you know, and so I started looking at it. And I was really picking between Creighton and Michigan, 10 and 11. And I went Creighton 10, Michigan 11. But honestly, if I saw Creighton as low as 20th in somebody else's rankings, like it wouldn't make me blink. You know, this is a interesting roster with a great coach. Um, but... It's not like they were really good last season. You know, they were, they finished 50 at the Kimpa and lost 12 times. And so you're asking largely the same group of guys plus Baylor Shireman to take a significant jump next season. Now they might, um, but that is what you're asking them to do. I, I thought the Creighton conversation was an interesting conversation because um, though there is a lot of group think when it comes to these rankings, um, there is a, a pretty, uh, 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 there, there's some disparity between how some of us are ranking Creighton um, in its current form. Creighton did get a nine seed. 
uh, and it did play Kansas competitively. So there are, there, there's a case to be made. You've got him 10. Uh, I don't know where I'll put him in my idiotic master ranking, um, but uh, I would have to believe that I'm going to have Creighton in the top 20. I think there's just too much returning, and I, I like Nembard a lot. So, yeah, uh, it's just a, it's an intriguing one there. So you've got him, you've got him bumped up with Baylor Shireman, who uh, who adds to the list. He is among the best committed transfers, along the likes of say Kendrick Davis to Memphis, Fardos Amac to Texas Tech, uh, Johnny uh, Janai Broom went to Auburn, uh, Audrey Capella went to St. John's, Dawson Garcia to Minnesota. You know, guys like that. Terrence Shannon Jr. went to Illinois. A um, couple quickies here. Well, well on that Can real quick, more? on Creighton, because I was talking to a coach and he made this point, which I thought was just sort of interesting. And I don't think it's something we've specifically talked about before. Um, it, it's possible Baylor Sh Sherman just really loves Omaha. Big County Crows fan. They Whatever. were the favorite from the start. Just you know, so we're right. We're too. But it's also clear to everybody in the industry that this is tied at least some way to name, image, and likeness opportunities. And what this one coach told me is, Keep an eye on the schools that don't have football because their boosters are not trying to th – th that money's not getting split between football and basketball. Like at Miami, you've got John Ruiz, who's like just – he's got – he's a billionaire. He's, he's willing to spend $2 million on name, image, and likeness. He can throw money at football, basketball, anything he wants. And by the way, in Dodd's story, he basically dared the NCAA to try to get in his way. He basically said, I'm – you know. Yeah, like, like this is whose lawyer are you going to trust? The billionaire, or the NCAA. <laughs> whose lawyer are you going to trust? Which legal team? That's right. Well, he's like, listen, we we are within the law, and that's all we've got to be in. We're within the law. You start telling me I can't do what I'm doing. That's when I take you back to court, and you'll lose. So, like, and oh, I thought this was interesting in Dodd's story. He's got these people. We're like, we've got to do something. We're going to do something. This has gotten out of control. And then, new paragraph, Ruiz said nobody has contacted him from the end of the They're not messing around with that guy. How they're, just not, that? they're just not going to. How about the fact that Lyons is on this committee? He's the West Virginia AD. And there's an NIL collective at West yeah. Virginia. Yeah, so get out of my face. Like, I, I, I hope the NCAA tries to crack down on boosters, especially billionaire boosters like John Ruiz. <laughs> I like, hope they do. I mean, it's just hilarious that we uh, – I'm, I'm going to shut up. It's just – it's amazing the quotes that I'm reading this week yeah. coming out of this as if, like, no one saw this coming and that they actually think they can stop it. Whatever. Keep going. Yeah. Everybody saw this coming with a brain, and there is no way to stop it now. Maybe there will be someday if you get congressional help. But there is no way to stop it now. And if you try to, t John Ruiz has become the face of this. And if you try to stop that guy, he will take you to court and he will win. He'll beat your brains in. And, and I, I, please, God, NCAA, try to crack down on specifically John Ruiz. Try to crack down. This guy didn't become a billionaire by being a dummy.